Okay, new project, new day. I'm gonna make a window for that hole right there. It's It's been a long time uh, coming because I designed it quite a while ago and I've had plastic in it for weeks now. But it's another rainy day and it's something that I can do indoors and I have the glass and the um, high density molecular weight plastic. I want to show you a little more about that. Anyway, I just got to get a um, piece of mahogany ripped put down and uh, like everything else on the boat, it's a tiny shop. So when I need to rip long pieces of wood, eight feet, it's gonna go basically out the starboard window, across the table saw, and out the port window. <laughs> Not ideal, but it works. I can actually do a similar thing in the aft cabin working fore and aft, but on these dark, dreary days, it's just too dark back there, and I don't really have any extra lighting right now. So anyway, this is going to be the base um, material for the frame on the sides and the top. Now this is a sliding window, two pieces of glass, one will be fixed on this side, and the one on this side will slide back and forth, basically because it's the one that's over the companionway, and it's easiest to see out and reach out and hand coffee up to the helmsman. But the sill, the bottom of it, I'm gonna make out of high density, molecular weight, plastic. Here it is. Um, I have a couple of pieces. This is black, which I'd like to use. Um, I have a thicker piece in white, which in some ways is better because I wanna be able to machine it on a slope. And uh, it would uh, be easier to get a decent slope in a one inch piece of stock. But Anyway, I haven't quite designed it yet, got to figure it all out. The reason I'm going to use plastic for the sill, because it's rot proof. Yeah, it's a wooden boat, yeah, it's plastic, but sometimes it's better to make something out of a better material. Within reason. Forgive me. Anyway, let's get on with it. I can't actually reach you. Uh, now that I have all this wood in the way. Ugh! Okay, here's my two pieces of glass I had cut. Um, got to get some solvent on here to clean that masking tape off. I hate regular masking tape. Urgh. Anyway, so as I said, one is fixed, the port side one on your right. The starboard side one on your left is going to slide. And um, it'll be the outside one actually, so it'll be further aft. And between them, I'm going to use a wiper, basically. And I had a couple of options for that, and I really didn't know what I'd use. But uh, for the Land Rover world, we have these rather nice little rubber wipers with an aluminum clip that will go over the edge of the glass and um, do that for me fairly well. This will have to be cut short. This is actually a brand new uh, wiper for the back window of my Land Rover pickup, which I just bought. I bought two, one for the truck and one for here. Anyway, okay, so what I need to do now is decide how much overlap. By looking at that uh, wiper, I realize I want about three quarters of an inch of overlap, which tells me how big I can make the frame, which is pretty close to what I guessed when I cut the hole in the back of the boat. All right, let's cut some wood up. 34 and three quarters. Fairly crucial. And the two side pieces. Actually, having done some calculations, I'm not going to cut the side pieces just yet because I've decided to use this nice thick piece of plastic, um, which will, uh, by the time I put a bevel on it, that'll determine how high the side pieces are going to be and I'd really rather just measure that from an existing piece. So it's time to make up the most crucial piece which is this bottom sill with a few notches and a big bevel and a drip edge. That's all table saw stuff. Mm. Says it doesn't snow in Victoria. It's slippery stuff. Kind of hard to hold on to. Need some sort of rubber gloves or something. Okay, so I've just decided I've cut a trough for the slider. 
Now I have to bevel it down to here, and I've shortened it a bit because there's no way I could get enough bevel out of this stock without coming to a knife edge at the bottom. I'd like to go at 15 um, degrees, which is sort of my favorite shedding water angle, but that might be ambitious. Um, let's see what we can do here. I want to see how much stock I'm going to have left on the at the drip edge by the time I cut that. Not enough because I'm not even on it yet. We're going to have to settle for 10 degrees. It's plastic. The water can sit on it forever. It's not going to rot. It still only leaves me with about a quarter of an inch at the front, which is okay. That's all you really need. All right, let's see how this goes. Even though this stuff is soft, it flies everywhere. Let's try and keep it in my eyes as much as possible. I tell you, I cannot hold on to this stuff. I need some rubber gloves. Hang on. That's better. Well, somewhat better. It's basically slippery stuff. I mean, it's designed to be slippery. That's why it's going to make an awesome window slider. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, so I said the blade's got to go that way a little bit, so the fence has got to come this way, just a hair. And let's see if that's what I want. Perfect. I don't know if you can see it, but I, um, I had cut with the table saw a flat in the bottom of this trough that the window will sit in. That's a quarter inch deep because there'll be another one out here for the other window. And from the edge of that, I want it to slope out. And that's not too bad for a drip edge. I can still machine a little uh, drip in the bottom of that. Okay, let's make the full cut. Hopefully this goes smoothly. Hmm. smooth table huh. lovely stuff you gotta see the pile of snow over here <laughs> yeah it's not the sort of thing this would be good to do inside I mean outside anyway that'll all vacuum up nicely okay well I'm actually uh, really pleased I think that worked out really well I have um, a very consistent quarter inch drip on the edge which I can tidy up out of this stock, I'm going to make the stop, basically. Well, you'll see it as I get to it, but the inner window, the one that doesn't move, is going to sit against the back edge. It's going to be held in by the trim, actually. The next one, the one that slides, rides in this channel I just created. But to keep it from falling out, I'm going to make a stop out of this material that will basically sit, well, it will be on this angle. Actually, it will be this way by the time I cut it. It'll drop in there and it'll be screwed in with stainless steel screws to keep it from falling out. Uh, the reason for that is that if the window ever breaks or needs maintenance or cleaning or something like that, I can just take the screws out and remove this stop and pull the glass out. It also means that the uh, I can leave a gap at both ends so any water that sits in the trough can come out and around the ends. I'm actually quite pleased with this, quite pleased with this. So that's an important piece for later. This is time to um, cut a drip on the outside edge. And I have to figure a way to cut um, a trough for the inner glass, which is going to be on the inside edge of this, that can stop abruptly because I don't want to cut a trough all the way along because the window's never going to move and I don't want to have water sitting in it. Now I could do that with the rudder table, um, but I really don't want to set the rudder table up just for that. I have to think about that for a second. Glasses, save your glasses. Come on, Peter. Okay, so these are the two notches that make it actually fit in the opening. The extension is so that I can have horns that stick out the side, that's what I call them anyway, so that the trim on the outside can land on top of the extension of the sill, or the sill extension. Okay, it's beginning to be a bit of equity put into this little piece of plastic, so um, 
basically if you imagine we were outside it will sit in there like that across the top down the sides and uh, open and close so it's time to calculate the side pieces uh, which will be cut on that same uh, bevel it'll be a miter on the uh, on the wood okay let's me get thinking Cutting the data for the fixed piece in the plastic, and again, as I mentioned, there's quite a bit of equity in this now, so I gotta make sure I got this the right way. Window goes in that way, it goes from here over. Okay, let's chamfer that out. Plow it out, dado it out, whatever it is. Discovered something neat about this stuff is that all the little swarf comes right off the, the slightest touch to the sanding block. All right, I'll have to chisel that out afterwards. Okay, we're getting closer and closer. Um, going to have to modify and cut little notches in the back of this to sit on there. So. The easiest way to do that is going to be a uh, just a couple of cuts with the saw. The only problem is now that I've already beveled that, it's difficult to put that in the fence very accurately, but I can do it within reason anyway. Okay, so this comes up here. Oh, you know, I think I'm just going to cut the notch. No. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm just going to put a notch right in there and I'll do that by setting the blade a quarter inch deep. No, I'm just going to do it by hand. All right, let me get some tools here. A little tool I've always liked is a little switchblade device that holds um, reciprocating saw blades. Just flip it out and it locks the reciprocating saw blade in. Very handy for a small, easy to use saw. Okay, get rid of the swarf as I usually do. And that fits on there very nicely. Very nicely. Okay. I won't make it. Let me do the other side. Very nice. Okay. Well, I think it's time to uh, put it together. Um, I'm going to make it, put it together once, take it apart, um, probably soak all the end grain with um, clear penetrating epoxy sealant. Or not. Am I just overthinking this? Um, anyway, let's get it together at least once. It's also pretty interesting clamping this stuff. Pretty slippery. Put the glass in. Beauty. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And at this end, let's close it up again. Slide it along. Yeah. An extra eight here is exactly what I want. Okay, I don't even need the glass anymore. That poor bit is getting duller and duller. I think I may have mentioned before that one of the biggest problems I'm having is keeping good counterbores. Um, so if you know of a really great counterbore, let me know. Yeah, I think I'll do this one before I go too far that way. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Square this one up.
Beautiful. Loving it. So this actual sliding pane goes up there and then sits against them, slides back and forth very nicely. And the fixed pane sits in this channel, which I still have to finish dadoing out. There we go. Lots of room for butyl tape. And my marks are correct. That makes me happy. So, let me tidy that up. Now that I'm so proficient at chiseling high density molecular weight plastic. Years ago I had trouble with my hands, sore and nerve damage, and I was diagnosed with repetitive strain injury. And uh, my doctor, who knew I was a builder, said, do you use your hand as a hammer? And I said, every day, all day. I said, well, don't. So it's time for me to not. Start not doing that. Any time now. So pretty much the last thing to do, other than take it all apart and finish it and stuff like that, is to make the stop for the glass. So in other words, the fixed piece of glass on the inside, well, it's fixed, it goes in here, and it'll be basically permanently bonded in. The sliding piece of glass will be out here. I gotta put it up into the trough up here first. There you go. Good. And it slides back. Oh, does that ever slide? Yes. Anyway, on this nice piece of Delrin or whatever it is. But I need something to keep it from falling out. Uh, but I also want that something to allow water to drain down and around. So the truth is, all I need to do is hold it and it's not going to fall out. So it doesn't have to be all the way along. In fact, I'd like it not to go right to the ends. I'm going to make sure that glass doesn't fall out. Um, because it, that will also encourage water to uh, sit against this wood back here. So I'm going to come back one inch. Anyway, let me get the table saw going and I'm going to make a stop for this. Let's get that glass out of it before it falls out. Okay. First, get this out of the way, get the table saw back up here. Always with the table saw. Bet you never thought you'd see me use a pusher stick, did you? Okay, so we'll clean up the all the swarf on here, or whatever you want to call this. I love this. This is so no no, I don't love this. I love wood. Wood is what I love. But this is pretty convenient. Excellent. More push stick action here, I think. I'm not getting my fingers too close to this. How about I wear my safety glasses also? Just for, you know, full. I just spun this around in my hand. I've lost track of which way it's going. It's going uh, this way. Good. Can't see a bloody thing. Okay, well, I did that wrong. I have a nice thin piece of really cool Delrin, but I didn't do it right. Um, basically, I did what I was planning to do in the first place. No bevel on the back side. So, if I'm really clever, I can still put a bevel in it, but there's not much stock left. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I got nothing better to do. Okay. So all I've really done now is make a tiny little quarter inch high trapezoid, which is pretty much exactly what I want. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna remove some of this flash again. Okay, glass goes in. Love it. So now, I just gotta put a couple tiny little screws in there, which means I need, that's a little counterbore. Little counterbore, gotta find it. Okay, I just found a little counterbore. I put some little marks, uh, basically, 
roughly where I'd like them to be. Okay, so now when I set it in here, to make sure that I don't set it too tight against the glass, I'm just going to take a little bit of paper and fold it around the glass, which will give me a little more clearance. Put it back up at the top there. There we go. Cranky, not enough hands. There we go. Okay, so I'll start it at each end, basically there, an inch over. So, all right, take the paper out, and I have a glidey smooth sliding window. Loving it. Absolutely loving this window. I basically have to take it apart now and uh, figure out how I'm going to glue it and oil it up and whether I'm going to seal it or not, and uh, then get it installed. I won't make you watch all that. Besides, it's getting light, and it might be, might be, might be beer time. Who knows? Good morning. Well, let's pick up where we left off yesterday with the window. Uh, I oiled it last night, so it's nice and sealed, and I'm going to put it back together. Um, before I put the sill piece back on, I'm going to actually seal it with a little butyl tape. I'm sure you've heard me talk about butyl tape plenty already. I absolutely love the stuff. It is, to me, the perfect caulking. Now, I'm having a little trouble here because, of course, it doesn't stick very well to oiled mahogany. Uh, but that's okay. We all like it. By the time this gets squeezed on here, it'll all be good. Okay, so let's put this back down. Bloody planes flying around all the time. It's funny. I think a lot of people think the planes Victoria Harbor are neat. I despise them. They're just noisy, annoying little pests. I can't hold either of these things. The butyl, I mean, the uh, plastic is too slippery and the wood is too slippery because it's freshly oiled. So, this is an adventure in applying pressure. Oh, I need clamps. Now, the butyl tape will sort of squirt out as I squeeze it, and you can just trim it off. There we go. You can just see the finest little line, I don't know if you can, a butyl tape just pumped out there. So I've made um, some frame pieces and uh, I've test fit them all and I've just oiled the back of them. So we'll reinstall them and uh, see how it all looks together. So there we go and we have a frame, at least on the outside. Um, Mitered at the bottom, more butyl tape of course. and. Uh, um, oiled before it went on so that it's um, sealed on the back side. What I'm going to do now is take some sandpaper and ease the edges a bit. I'm just putting on a uh, bottom part of the frame which is nice because it'll provide a little um, structural support to the rather flimsy plastic. Actually it's just a different material. You just work with it differently than you would with wood. Again I'm going to put some beetle tape on here. Oh, it took way too much off because I only need a thin little strip for this. Ironically, it sticks to fingers better than anything else. Excellent. Okay. Well, other than uh, getting some more oil on here, this is just about done. Turning in a nice little window. Of course, I'm going to have to plug all these screw holes, but I don't have any bungs right now. I haven't had a chance to go drill some. I don't have a drill press, but I have a friend with a drill press, so I'm going to go over there in a few days and make up a whack of bungs. Okay, let's get a little oil on here and uh, get it installed. Ah, beautiful. Again, with oil, it doesn't matter how dusty a mess you are when you're putting it on because you're going to wipe it all off anyway. Of course, this will all get varnished eventually. Um, the oil is really just to protect it as a base coat because I think it gives it a nicer color. Okay, we're oiled up. 
and uh, let that sit for a couple of hours before I wipe it down and uh, then I can install it. Now that is an okay looking window. Will it fit in backwards? Perfect. Of course that's backwards, right? That's the outside of the window, but it's a fair place for it to sit and dry. Of course, we won't see any of the white plastic from inside the boat, only from outside. I'm feeling okay about that plastic, I really am. I think it's great. Okay, next project. Excited?